Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be taking a look at what at first seems to be a very strange claim that the AKMP rear sight device reduces recoil. Now there have been some different threads on this on Reddit from time to time, but it turns out that this phenomenon is not as straightforward as it seems, as it involves the dreaded field of view settings and some camera recoil concepts as well. Okay, so starting at the beginning, a while back a user in my Discord, Count NiceLord, pointed out something that they had been seeing with the AKMP rear sight, which is that when adding it to an AK with a regular rear sight, you get a massive reduction in recoil. At the time, I went and did a quick test on my end, but could see virtually no difference between the two, which was really odd. After a little back and forth, it turned out that they were using 75 FOV as opposed to my regular 64, and indeed upon switching to 75 FOV, there was a massive difference between the apparent recoil when the AKMP device was attached versus when it was not. So what is going on here? The AKMP doesn't do anything in theory other than add a glowing yellow blob on the rear sight, and it has no stats associated with it, so why does the recoil look so different? The first thing that you might wonder is whether the actual recoil is different between these two weapons. Doing just that, if we test the real recoil pattern of the AKM with the AKMP sight, and then we test it without it, it is in fact the same. So all that is happening is how the weapon looks and feels. How this can happen without affecting the actual recoil itself is camera recoil, but not in the way that we traditionally think about it. More specifically, what we observe is the recoil of the weapon model between the two different situations, so although the bullets are going broadly in the same place, to the user it's almost as if the weapon is shooting lower than you would expect when the AKMP device is not attached. In fact, what we usually think of as camera recoil is practically the same between the two tests, which is the amount that the viewpoint jumps higher after each shot. The difference is specifically the weapon appearing to move more without the AKMP. At this stage, obviously the field of view is having some impact on this effect, so let's check a few of these. It's useful to remember that in Tarkov, field of view is measured by a vertical FOV rather than horizontal FOV, which we're used to from other games. For me and my 16x9 monitor, a Tarkov vertical FOV of 64 is equivalent to 96 horizontal. Either way, without the AKMP sight, using our same 66 recoil AKM, at 50 FOV the weapon has the least perceived recoil. At 64 it's somewhere in the middle. And at 75 we have the most. Now, when attaching the AKMP device, all of the FOV settings appear to have the same effective recoil for the weapon model itself. Here's 50. Here's 64. And here's 75. Interestingly, the 75 FOV gun now feels more stable than the others because it's moving less on the screen, but this is because the target area is smaller with this higher setting. Even at 75 FOV, when using the AKMP, the weapon now maps properly onto the area which we're shooting at, but this is now a much smaller section on the screen itself, because we have a ton more pixels in total around the sides due to the higher FOV setting. Okay, so now we understand that iron sights just don't work very well at high FOV because of the recoil of the weapon model, which makes it feel like there is more recoil than there actually is. But ultimately, is there anything special about the AKMP device itself? Well, it turns out in fact no, because you can benefit from the corrected weapon model recoil that we see with it on, on any other red dot or holographic sight once it's attached. Using any of these gives you the more normal looking weapon recoil, so there's clearly something about the AKMP device which tells the game that this acts like an unpowered one times optic, which then goes on to adjust the recoil of the weapon model like all the others do. Alright, so what about powered optics? The thing that we normally care about here is the scope backing out at the edges when we shoot, because in many cases, such as on full auto, this gets so bad that the scope can't be looked through at all. With a low FOV of 50, the effect is still there, but as we move up through the field of view settings, we can see that it does get progressively worse. What's interesting is that although the field of view settings naturally mean that we can see more stuff on our screen with 75 than 50, when scoped in, the actual field of view within the scope and around in our peripheral vision is the same no matter what the setting is on. However, we can see some effects on higher FOV, firstly a loss in detail in the periphery, which seems to be the same as the loss you'd get normally but zoomed in here, and also apparent shortening of the barrel and front sight as seen through the scope. It's this effect that hints as to why higher FOV causes more scope shadow and strange eye relief issues on full auto. 
exactly why this happens is some combination of the positional differences of the view cameras at different FOV settings, the pivot point of weapon recoil being too far forwards around the hand rather than the shoulder, and also actual camera recoil to some degree, but I'm not an expert on these elements and precisely how they all tie together within the game engine. Practically though, we can see that lower FOV helps with these issues when scoped as well, so ultimately it's up to you what you do. I might reduce my field of view a little again, because in Tarkov you could argue that peripheral vision perception is less important than target size at range compared to many other faster paced games. This obviously depends on what type of gameplay you prefer and the situations that you find yourself in more often, but there are certainly some advantages to running in a lower field of view. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.